What's going on, everybody? We're back with another episode of Review the Review, and today we are going over Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the brand new Quentin Tarantino movie, and I actually saw this on Sunday night. Today is Wednesday, <laughs> um, and honestly, I put off recording this just because I got a little bit lazy, but anyways, we're here. And I am actually really excited for this because this movie was fucking phenomenal. You can see right off the bat, Rotten Tomatoes, 84%, Metacritic, 85%, IMDb, 8.6 out of 10. And as of an hour ago, Margot Robbie takes a plunge at Once Upon a Time in Hollywood premiere. But, you know, it's okay. Um, so, as always, we're just going to go over some quick little details. So... Um, summary of the movie is Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood visits 1969 L.A. where everything is changing as TV star Rick Dalton, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, and his longtime stunt double Cliff Booth, Cliff Booth by Brad Pitt, make their way around an industry they hardly recognize anymore. The ninth film from the writer-director features a large ensemble cast and multi-storylines in a tribute to the final moments of Hollywood's golden age. Released July 26th of this year, director Quentin Tarantino, screenplay by Tarantino, production company Sony, Columbia Pictures, Heyday Films, Polybona Films, and producers is Tarantino, David Heyman, Shannon McIntosh. So, that's skipping right into critic reviews, so we'll just get right into it with Rotten Tomatoes. So, we can see here... Tomato meter, 84%. Audience score, 72%. Um, let's jump down on it into critic reviews. So we'll start right off the bat with Matthew Rosa from Salon.com. Um, it feels like Tarantino is so wrapped up in indulging in his own filmmaking style that he loses sight of what made his best movies work. Hands down disagree. Um... I think this was actually a perfect, like, 100% beautiful way that he made the film. Uh, at no point in the almost three hours of the movie did I feel like he was, you know, doing too much or doing too little. I kind of lost my train of thought of trying to see if those things were happening because the movie was just so good. And honestly, yes, I am going to drool over this movie the entire review because I loved it. Uh, Dana Stevens with Slate. The whole package is enjoyable, heterogeneous, stuffed with verbal and visual jokes and vibrant period-appropriate music and filmed in Tarantino's ingeniously kinetic style. I'll agree with that. Um, Peter Rayner. Although DiCaprio seems miscast as an aging, washed-up actor... Mostly because he never seems to age. Um, gonna assume that was mainly just a joke and that they weren't actually saying DiCaprio was miscast because disagree there. Pitt in a rangy live lived in performance is marvelous. As Sharon Tate, Margot Robbie is quite touching as the film's golden emblem of innocence. Margot Robbie playing Sharon Tate is hands down probably the most genius casting that this year will see and i did not realize this until there's a scene in the movie and obviously everyone knows who sharon tate is if you don't know who sharon tate is you don't know anything about movies and you should probably go google some stuff but there's a scene in the movie no spoilers scene in the movie where uh margot robbie who's playing Sh uh, sharon tate stands in front of a poster from one of Sharon Tate's movies where she was in with Dean Martin and when you see both of them next to each other on screen it hit me in that moment how uncanny it is how much they look alike like if if you wanted to do a Sharon Tate look alike contest Margot Robbie would win unless like Sharon Tate herself was there and then even then Margot Robbie would win um, Richard Brody from New Yorker. Tarantino has become a nudnik filmmaker who grabs a viewer by the lapel and says and says and says what's on his mind. I mean, yeah, 
Is that supposed to be a bad thing? Because I think that was awesome. Anthony Lane with New Yorker as well. The filmmaker may be on a mission to get everything right about 1969 down to the sounds and smells, but he's also inviting us to smoke a little wrongness. Yes, in a beautiful way, because obviously every Tarantino film, if you haven't seen a Tarantino film, you're living your life wrong, and I'm sorry for you. But um, for those of us who know Tarantino films and have seen Tarantino films, they're always going to have those landmark kind of out-of-pocket moments. Um, Take a, a look at... See if I can think of one off the top of my head that's a good example. Django Unchained. The end of the movie when he's in the mansion. That entire sequence of events was sort of out of pocket, but beautifully crafted in Tarantino's way. The uh, No spoilers, but this movie, you are going to get that classic Tarantino ending of a movie. Um, it skipped my mind the whole time because you go most of the movie just enjoying this beautiful story i forgot while watching it that i was like having to look out for those tarantino mo i call them tarantino moments when things just sort of happen and you end up on the edge of your seat in a huge like oh my god what is going on kind of moment but don't feel too bad because this movie delivers on that a hundred percent perfectly um let's skip down to alicia queen with alicia queen probably her own website the movie is a mechai story on the i definitely pronounced that wrong surface but if you look deeper it's also a pretty compelling manifesto by quentin tarantino on new hollywood Mm, i'm gonna disagree with the first part but the second part I will agree with because the whole movie is kind of like a call. It's definitely a callback, but it's kind of like praising Hollywood in this in the late '60s, which I mean was called the golden age for a reason. But he does a beautiful job of poetically praising that time period, but then also having you kind of see wow this is what we get nowadays and like this is what it was like back then and even just the way of life back then he definitely goes into a little like there's little snippets in conversation where you kind of pick up on like the difference in economy the difference in drug culture the difference in like social norms um things like that that you can look at people nowadays like for example there's one scene no spoilers um, where they there's a talk about prices of a drug and like <laughs> at least three people in the theater when they said how much it costed were like wait are you serious like you just get those those fun little moments where you're like wow things were a lot better back in 1969 than they are in 2019 at least maybe not better more fun definitely more fun uh, let's do Rich Klein, Shadows on the Wall. Like other Tarantino movies, what feels like a period drama is actually another entertaining romp through his own wild world. I'll agree with that one completely. So let's take a quick look at some user reviews. So we have Eugene B., who's a super reviewer. While the pacing and duration can feel dragging a bit, there's no denying how the ninth film in Tarantino dazzles ninth film of Tarantino dazzles with its scenic direction and full fledged entertainment value. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood exudes the performance of Leo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, paints a beautiful picture of sixty nine LA, and conjures a twist that only the writer producer could pull off. Yeah, gonna agree with that one. That one's kinda self explanatory. Let's go, oh, wow, dude, that's a lot of words. We are not going to do that right now. Um, I'll let you guys hover over that if you want to read it, but that's a lot of words that I don't care to read. You also have, oh, my God, did you type a goddamn essay? All right. Let's go back to... 
let's go to IMDB. I also really like his hair in this. Sorry, I got caught up looking at the pictures. Okay. User reviews. So we have a 9 out of 10. This film will certainly divide audiences. Okay, let's see what this is. Uh, another great Tarantino film. Though I do agree there are times where it feels a little indulgent and meandering. No, it's just good storytelling. The climax of the film is fantastic, though, yes. And it does make it feel like it was all worth it for the most part. Most part, there isn't really a defined narrative. Yes, there is. Which may put some people off, but Tarantino's sublime dialogue and the great performances make all the scenes at least entertaining. What? It's no Pulp Fiction, but it's definitely... Dude, stop speaking words. 10 out of 10, a love letter to all that is Hollywood. Just got out of a screening. This movie was perfection to me. Everything plays a part in the experience. This is some of the best acting I've seen in a long time. Gonna agree. I was swept away with the book, music, and story. The best part of this movie is when you are spending time with these characters. Rick Dalton has quickly become one of my favorite characters of all time. Leo lights the screen on fire every time we are with him. He is the ultimate package in this by giving Rick so much depth. Pitt does an amazing job as well. Cliff Booth would be a guy I would want to hang out with. It's nice to see a movie about two guy friends that support one another in different facets of life. It is so much deeper than some sort of average buddy cop affair. Margot, there's supposed to be T. Robbie gets a shout out too. She truly embodies Sharon Tate and glows on screen. She is amazing. This is Tarantino at the height of his powers. He gets the best performance out of everyone in every part of this movie. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I don't need to keep reading the rest of that. You can pause it and read that if you want, but you kind of get the point. 10 out of 10, skip you warning spoilers. 10 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 10 out of 10. 8 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Tarantino is like a Hanzo sword. It can only be compared to other Hanzo swords. Tarantino at his best in rare form. DiCaprio and Pitt acted their faces off. It's funny, smart, and original world. Remakes and comic book films, a true new masterpiece. That's funny. I like that quote. That might be <laughs> the best description of the movie yet. We don't deserve this movie. Yes, going to agree. Thank God, because Pulp Fiction was made in another era. Otherwise, it would have been reviewed by nowadays audiences or fans of CGI and Fast and Furious. This movie, like Pulp Fiction, is not about the plot. Pulp Fiction has no plot as well. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is about the characters and their situations. You need to have some culture in movies to like this one. Okay, so I get what he's saying, but there is there is an overall quote-unquote plot in the form of every person's story comes down to the ending so each per each character in the film has a story going on and there's a scene at the playboy mansion where the guy who plays um steve mcqueen steve mcqueen is sitting there smoking and talking to a lady and he points out a bunch of different characters like uh, Roman Polanski and um, Emile Hirsch's character and Margot Robbie's character and all these other characters, and he's telling like kind of their background stories, how they ended up meeting each other. And then you go off and you have Leo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt's stories together, but then they also have their own individual stories that are being told. So it's all these different people's stories that climax at the end, and it shows how everything ends up coming together. So, in the traditional form of the idea of a plot, no. There is not one, like, overarching thing that all the characters deal with together and blah, blah, blah. It's the, the all the people's stories come together at the end. And sure, that's not, like, quote-unquote what a plot is, but, like, I just wanted to put a little more emphasis that it's not just, like... I guess pointless storytelling. Even even if it didn't come together at the end, I would still would never say it was pointless storytelling because the stories were told and the cinematography was amazing. Like it was a great movie even without the ending, which is what I thought was fantastic. The ending just put it over the top and made it so much better. Um but like I said, w even without that ending, it still was an amazing film. 
Uh, let's go to full cast and crew just so we can show you the ensemble of all these amazing actors that they had. So you have DiCaprio, who's Rick Dalton, Pitt, who's Cliff Booth, Margot Robbie, Sharon Tate, Emile Hirsch is Jay Sabring, Margaret Qualley is Pussycat, who is one of... Um, if you have not already seen the trailers for the movie, um, Charlie Manson's children and Char Char Charles Manson. Char uh, my God, words. Okay, so I had to cut right there because my mouth stopped working and I wasn't able to pronounce words. Um, Charles Manson's kids and the whole thing he had going on is in this, so Pussycat is one of those females. Uh, Timothy Oliphant plays James Stacy. Julia Butters is a, a little girl who plays a kind of semi-important character but she is a phenomenal child actress like i was actually kind of blown away by her performance in the movie but you know at the same time she had all these amazing actors and actresses helping her out i mean i i at least assume unless she was just naturally that good which is even more impressive um you got bruce dern uh some other big names al pacino i honestly forgot him for a second which is sad because i'm like one of the world's biggest al pacino fans but i just got so caught up in speaking where is my other boy there was someone else i wanted to point out where yet where yet i definitely passed it kurt russell Where are you at? I passed it. Oh, here we go. Mike Moe, who plays Bruce Lee. When I tell you... Hang on. Hang on. When I tell you the casting for this movie was phenomenal, I mean the casting for this movie was phenomenal. So this is Mike Moe. This is a picture from the rap. This is Mike Moe as Bruce Lee. First of all, yeah, he looks like Bruce Lee. But his the way he talks and his mannerisms is like exactly how Bruce Lee, every video you can ever find, any interview of Bruce Lee, the way he talks, the way he sounds, the way he acts, this was to the T like the best Bruce Lee impersonation you'll probably ever see in your life. Granted, they do kind of make Bruce Lee seem like kind of an, an a-hole in this movie which he wasn't unless he actually was and just not a lot of people know that but at least from what i've known from googling and you know reading interviews and and all these different things about people who knew bruce lee um i i've only ever seen praise about how great of a person he was so the scene kind of was a little off-putting um simply because of that but at the base of it, the guy playing, Mike Moe playing Bruce Lee was phenomenal. Uh, here's a quick little picture of Charles Manson, <laughs> which they did get that one pretty accurate too, the way he looks. And he didn't really have that many major um, scenes in the movie, but just enough that you were like, oh my god, like that dude's here. Here's Margot Robbie dressed as Sharon Tate. And you know what? Actually, real quick, we are going to Google Margot Robbie Sharon Tate. And try and get an idea of what they look like. How how alike they look. Like, hang on, where's a good one? This one, this is a good one. So this is Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate in the movie. And then this is Sharon Tate actually Sharon Tate tell me that is not like the same exact person like come on now look at this look at this look at this it's the same person <laughs> the nose is a little different but like she has kind of a, a smaller nose than uh, at least from that angle it looks like it but I mean other than that come on that's the same person 
Like it's uncanny how alike they look. I would, I would say that that's a direct clone. Which is probably why Margot Robbie is such a great actress. She's a direct clone. (laughs) She's an exact replica. Not actually, but... Oh my god, dude. Come on now. It's it's just insane. The, The acting was phenomenal. The movie is phenomenal. Just everything. The... The... Like... Even the... The outfits that they wear. Like, this is just one scene... But you just get that feeling like they are living in the 60s. Like, and also the whole movie, Brad Pitt wears these like really, really cool moccasins that are like kind of tied up at the uh, around like the edge of the ankle. Like they just look so freaking cool. But I I don't know, man. There's so much that you can say. Oh, great scene. There's so much that you can say. Oh, here's um, this is on the Manson Ranch, Brad Pitt, and then this was Pussycat. Um, don't remember this lady's name, but this is Pussycat. So, like I was saying though, there's just so much about this movie that is over the top fantastic. Honestly, hands down, one of the best, if not the best, movie you can see all year and all of 2018 and all of 2017 and all of 2016 and all of 20 (laughs) and so on and so forth it is just a fantastic fantastic movie quentin tarantino as always completely hit it out of the park a hundred percent so i hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you go see the movie uh i would 100% recommend go see it in theaters just to get that extra vibe of like I mean you know it's always more powerful when you see a movie in theaters at least for me but I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you in the next one take care